Linux Intro to Environmental Variables. This video will demonstrate how to list and set environmental variables in Linux using an Ubuntu 22.04 virtual machine. Steps in this video include defining what an environmental variable is, how to list all the environmental variables, and how to set an environmental variable. Please note that if you change environmental variables incorrectly, this may cause your computer to not start or run with inconsistent errors. For that reason, I have included a disclaimer, and if you wish, you can stop the video and read the disclaimer. So what is an environmental variable? Environmental variables are system-wide values passed to a program or process that give the program information and configuration settings required for the program to run effectively. Some environmental variables include home, user, and path. The path variable contains an ordered list of paths that the operating system will search for executables or ready-to-run files. The path environmental variable in Ubuntu is found in the etc directory in the environment file. So the next step I'm going to do is take a quick look at the path environmental variable. In order to do that, I'm going to use a terminal here. But before I do that, I'm going to change a local variable and change the background here from this dark purple color to white because that's easier to see in a video. And in order to do that, I would simply go to these three lines right here and click on Preferences, change the theme variant to light, and that's only so this makes it easier to see here, light. And then I'm going to create a new profile. And I'm going to call it Video Recording because that's what I'm going to use this profile for. Click on Create, switch over here to Colors, uncheck Use Colors from System Theme, click on Gnome Light, click right here, Gnome Light, make sure, or whatever one you want to choose if you want to change your background color. Click on Set as Default. So now whenever I open up the terminal, it will have a white background. Close this, and of course, you see it's not white, but let's close it. And then Control-Alt-T to open up the terminal again. And now it's got a white background. And now to take a look at the path variable, I would simply go cat etc, because it's in the etc directory. And then I give it the file name, environment. And there's the path. So it's an ordered list of directories that lead to files that you want to run. So what are the basic characteristics of an environmental variable? One, it follows the format of name equal value. By convention, name is capitalized and value is usually in lowercase letters. Underscores are allowed. Two, if there's a space in a value, put quotation marks around the value. And three, a variable can contain more than one value. Multiple values are separated by colons. Take a look at the path variable in the terminal. So let me put up some examples of uh, conventional formatting for environmental variables. So if I had an environmental variable labeled water, just put equal and then clear. And that would be one example. The name is in capital letters and the value is in lowercase letters. Okay, let me try an underscore here. Water equal clear. Cool. And that would be an example of an underscore. How about a space in the value? Ocean equal quotation marks blue, green. And finally, let me do an environmental variable with multiple values. R-A-I-N 
underscore B O W rainbow. You notice I'm using an underscore there. Equal red green blue. Writing in environmental variables can get much more complicated than this, but that's sufficient for getting a start with an introduction. Some commands to list environmental variable names and values. The env command, it can run a program in another environment without changing your current environment. It also prints out a list of all the environmental variables. The printenv command, it too prints a list of all the environmental variables. Or given an environmental variable name, it prints out the value. The echo command, it prints out the value of an environmental variable or shell variable when using the format dollar variable name. Shell variables will be discussed a little further on. And additional commands that can list environmental variables include declare, set, and compgenv. So my next step is to demonstrate the env, print env, and echo command. So to use the env command, you would simply go env. And because it's going to show more than one page of information, I'm going to pipe it into more, which I can paginate. And you've got all your environmental variables there. And then I hit the space bar, which shows the next page. And finally, you've got the rest of your environmental variables. Print env will do the same thing. V, hit enter. I didn't pipe it into more, so it kind of went real fast. Here it is. Now, if you want to see what the difference are between the two, uh, diff env print env you'll notice that they're the same except for line 44 and one will say usr bin print env and the other one will say usr bin env so they pretty much put out the same thing the echo command will give you the value of a variable name. For example, if I say echo, and then I have to put a dollar sign in front of it, and I say path, it should give me the path, or echo dollar print wd, and it will give the working directory, or echo dollar user should give me my name. Now the echo command can also show you shell variables which uh, come from the bash shell I'm using but this video emphasizes environmental variables. This section covers how to create and delete an environmental variable. There are two commands to do this. One is the export command used to create an environmental variable and the unset command which is used to delete an environmental variable. So let's demonstrate how they are used. First let's clear the terminal. Clear. So now let's create an environmental variable. Export sky capital letters equal blue. So now an environmental variable has been created. Print env sky. So it shows up and if I use just print env, hit enter, and you'll notice right here it says sky equal blue. So now let's get rid of this sky environmental variable. Unset sky print env sky and nothing. So it's deleted. What is a shell variable? A shell variable is a local variable as opposed to an environmental variable. Shell variables are only available for the current shell. Bash or Z shell 
etc., and are not inherited by a child process. A common way to create environmental variables is to first create a shell variable and then export it. Only then can a child process inherit the shell variable. By using the export command, the shell variable is now upgraded to a system-wide environmental variable. Shell variable names do not have the convention of using uppercase letters. First, I'm going to clear the terminal, CLE clear, and I'm going to create a shell variable. Since I will be converting this to an environmental variable, uppercase letters are used. Sun equal yellow. Now I'm going to create another shell variable that I won't convert to an environmental variable. Sunset equal red. You notice I did not use uppercase letters. And that's only a format. It's not uh, a rule or anything. Just, uh, just a formatting convention. I can use echo to show both variables. Echo dollar sun. And it says yellow, and then echo dollar sunset a red. Now I can use print env to show that neither is an environmental variable. Print env sun. Of course, nothing will show up. And then I'll do the same for sunset nothing. So neither one of those are environmental variables. Now I'm going to use export sun and enter. And now sun is an environmental variable. I'll do print env sun. And you'll see now sun is an environmental variable. Basically, I've started writing a shell variable and changed it to an environmental variable. To show both shell variables and environmental variables, I can use the compgen-v for variable command from the bash shell. Compgen-v, not f, dash v. And you notice down here at the bottom, it says sunset, and up near in the top, it says sun. Basically, the compgen command is designed to show all shell variables, but since all the global environmental variables are visible to the shell, compgen shows those too. This section covers how to make an environmental variable permanent. To make an environmental variable permanent, you will have to open a configuration or shell script file and edit the file to contain the environmental variable. One file you might want to edit is the etc environment file, but this is frequently not recommended since any environmental variable here is available to all users. Another file that Ubuntu does not recommend to edit directly is the etc profile file. A mistake here can turn your computer into a brick. While you can edit the .sh files in the etc profile Dot D directory, many times it is simply easier to edit the dot profile and dot bashrc files in the user home directory. First save the original file with a dot org or dot bckup extension and then make the edit. By backing up the file first it will make it easier to recover if something goes wrong with the edit. Okay, so let's make a permanent environmental variable. Let's clear this. Make sure I'm in the home directory. I'll do an ls list slash a for all. And I can see my dot profile and dot bash rc file. I'm going to back those up. cp dot profile to dot profile dot org for original. And then uh, again a cp dot bash rc to bash rc dot org. Verify that I've got those files backed up. Do an ls dash a. 
Whoops, let's get my fingers going in the right order here. Do an ls-a, and I have a dot .profile.org, dot .org, ig, and uh, same thing for the bash file. So now you can grab any text editor. In my case, I'm using the Vim text editor, and you can install that if you want by sudo apt install vim-y, or you can use the nano or get it text editors that come with Ubuntu, whichever one you prefer to use. Since I'm using a Vim text editor, I'll use vim.pro file. And I'm going to go to N, Shift, G, plus A. And that will also put me in insert mode. Since I'm in insert mode, I'm going to just hit Enter and export. I have to use the export again. My var, my variable equal my variable. Hit escape, colon, wq for right quit. And the next one I'm going to do is the dot bash rc file. Again, I'm going to go shift g a. Go to the end and put me in insert mode. Hit enter. Again, export my var equal my var in lowercase. Escape, right quit. Currently, the environmental variable I've just written is not in memory. So to get it into memory, I'm going to log out and log back in. That way I'll use the login shell, make sure it runs, and the dot .profile file will run when I use the login shell. Okay, so power off, log out, log out, log out, Control alt t for the uh, terminal and print env my var and there it is. It's a permanent environmental variable. There's another way to make changes to files and that is to use the echo command. So let's do an ls a and in this case what I'm going to do is copy the original file and change profile.org to dot profile. And what I'm doing here is changing back to the original profile file. Hit enter. And I'll do the same thing for the dot bash rc dot two dot bash rc. Hit enter. And let's go take a look at the dot profile file and you can see there is no environmental variable in there. So if I want to add one to it, I would use the echo command. Echo export my var equal my var. Put in a closing quotation, double arrows, and I would put in dot profile. Now I've already got the dot profile org. So now if I do a cat, dot profile you'll see it's there and let me do the same thing to the bash rc file and I'm going to cat that hit enter and again that's there and again if I log in and log out have my var as an environmental variable so that's how you make an environmental variable permanent this has only been an intro into environmental variables, a skeleton or scaffolding upon which to build additional skills to work with these variables. Unfortunately, this introduction only covers how to list, create, and delete example variables and does not get into the deep end of how each of the environmental variables interact with a binary program in a complex manner. When a viewer asked me to create a video on environmental variables, my first thought was that it would be better to create that lesson in text format instead of a video format. But since most of my videos have been how-to, I thought a video detailing environmental variables would be an interesting lesson for me to learn some new things. If you want to continue learning additional information about environmental variables, check out the additional info section in this video's description. 
Thank you for watching this. If you have any questions on this video, please ask them in the comments below. Also, if there is a video you would like to see made, please let me know. While I can't promise anything, I will try and look into it. Cheers.